up guys, John Clemsworth here, just doing a quick update video on my burnout recovery process. Now, if you haven't watched the previous videos before this one, uh, explaining what led to my burnout, what are the sort of recovery uh, processes that I tried to better myself, how was the process like, speaking to my psychologist and all that, and basically my whole year, my whole journey to getting to this point, then you can watch that by going at the end of the video and on the end cards, the end screens, you can click on the burnout series where you can start over from the beginning. But if maybe you just want to continue from there, you haven't watched the previous videos, you just want to know, you know, how long does it take to recover from burnout? It's been one year, how you've been? Well, you can just watch this video if you want. If you like this one, you can watch the previous ones. It doesn't really uh, matter in the end. So anyway, so today is we are june 6th no june 29 2022 so it's been about one year since i asked for leave off of my work a medical leave so what happened is you can watch the previous videos but around june i asked for a medical leave at my part-time job because i was working at a call center and the stress was too much uh, the stress from the job plus trying to run my business at the same time was just too much at once. And for that reason, I had to put things aside. In June, I asked for a leave and I tried to go back to work around, um, I think it was around July, August. So then I quit my job in November. Now I was no longer working and I had all the time in the world to really relax myself, take care of myself. Now the challenge at this point was, well, I'm not working at the moment and I feel great, okay. But how will I feel when I start work again? That's what I thought. So now I'm at a point now in my journey where I'm slowly starting to take on new clients again, where I'm slowly starting to get to work again. And to, f to sort of give you a um, sort of follow up on what's been going on and all that. Now I am a full time YouTuber slash coach. So I quit my job entirely to plunge in and become a self-employed, you know, business owner, uh, running my own business and doing all of that jazz. I'll explain to you near the later portion of the video, you know, the, why I chose this decision to overcome burnout, why I think starting my own business <laughs> would help, which is, sounds really paradoxical because you would think that, you know, the stress of starting your own business, that must be so much more than, you know, a job, right? And you're correct in, in some scenarios, but I'll explain to you why in my scenario, through my introspection, I realized that this might be the thing that might help me the most in some strange way. So it's a double-edged sword, but we'll get to that a bit later. Yeah, right now, how do I feel right now is I feel much better, I'd say. More motivation, more energy. The thing though, is that when I do nothing, you know, when I'm, or when I'm relaxing or when I'm, I don't know, hanging out with friends, I feel totally fine. My energy's fine, you know, um, even my friends and my girlfriend have reported that I look and feel better. It seems like I feel better than before. The one thing is, when I do work, let's say I work on, I don't know, shooting those videos, or I work on some business processes or coaching clients, it seems like my energy is not like before. So it's like 20, 30% less. It's still less than before. But you know, if we spoke, let's say six months ago, it was 50 to 60% less than before. Now it's about 20 to 30. So you can see some improvement for sure. Um, so that's that. That's how I would report how I feel right now. And when I'm working, I still feel lows in energy and dips that seem to have been quicker than I would want to. So before, like a long time ago, I could, you know, when I started Nameless, I could work like four, six, eight hours a day, sometimes more, just shooting videos, scripting videos, and it was like, it was totally fine for me. But now it seems like after, let's say, more than two to four hours of work, and I'm really sort of starting to think, feel a little worn down. Um, in some way that can be bad, but in some ways, maybe it's good because because I have less hours, I give myself less hours to work. I try to be more efficient in my, in my work, maybe. In some way, maybe, maybe that's a good thing. That's what I've learned to do also with uh, trying to, you know, balance life, recovery, and work at the same time. There were certain emotional events that happened to me the last few months, I'd say, that might have contributed to the stress and, you know, um, and might have contributed of uh, the burnout recovery, maybe taking a bit longer. Uh, so, for example, financial anxiety recently, 
So for example, the last few months, me and my girlfriend, we both quit our jobs and we both became self-employed. Now, if you've never been self-employed, or maybe you've been self-employed, you can, I'm sure you can imagine the stress of not having a steady paycheck and not knowing when your next paycheck will come, when your next client will come and all that. So that's definitely been uh, the more stressful things recently. Um, also, my parents, they decided to sell their uh, our, our home, so our, my childhood home that I've lived there for, you know, the majority of my life and sort of grieving this process and also coming to grasp with the idea that you know now I'm I'm uh, nearing my later 20s I'm mid 20s to later 20s now and I sort of having those sort of existential thoughts about you know feeling the feeling of your life passing by especially now that <laughs> my parents are retiring and sort of this whole process also has been I don't know if I would say stressful, maybe in some in some way grief and is some sort of emotional stress, you could say. So you could say that that, that has contributed maybe to, uh, you know, my energy levels being a bit more low or my work capacity. Maybe it doesn't lower my work capacity, but it makes me feel like I don't want to work because I'm sad or whatever, right? <laughs> and also with all of these things going on, also struggling with imposter syndrome in some way where you feel like, I know logically those thoughts are false, but emotionally I feel like, well, who am I to help people if I'm <laughs> going through some sort of crisis myself or maybe I haven't overcame my own? And then sort of uh, going through this uh, process of feeling like an imposter because of that. But I would say that in, you know, if I could paint uh, broad strokes here, I would say that I don't think I'm in an existential crisis uh, per se, but I would say that I'm having existential thoughts, which I think is a good thing uh, in, a, in a strange way to think about your existence, about your life, about the meaning you want to contribute. I think there's nothing wrong with that. I wouldn't say it's a crisis, probably just a period of my life of deep introspection. So I would say that it's a good thing overall. So back to my burnout, right? And now I wanna talk about what are the things that helped me the most throughout my journey and throughout my recovery process the last year and even a year and a half, because it's been even leading to my burnout. I've had many signs and, you know, I've tried many things to cope. So what has helped me the most? So recently, like if we look really recently, uh, just about two weeks ago, I went to a trip overseas to Cuba. Cuba uh, to an all included resort where we, you know, we had unlimited food, uh, unlimited alcohol, unlimited, you know, uh, everything basically. They would clean your room, they did everything for you, and that was that was a great experience. And it felt like this was the reset button that I needed in order to get back on my business afterwards, and you know, just get back on the wheel. And it was strange because until that point, I haven't, I hadn't taken the plane in nearly 10 years right nearly 10 years i haven't taken the plane on top of that i haven't gone on a trip overseas in nearly probably 10 years uh the last real trip i went to probably dated back to a few years ago or something like that so when you don't take a vacation for that long it's really hard for your mind to reset i think and going on this trip really helped me to decompress and you know think about my life and think about what i want to do in the future you know, just be in a different world. Sometimes what you need to recover is uh, because you're so often trapped in the same bubble of the same job, the same people, the same toxic environment. Maybe if you, you know, struggle in a toxic environment and then you move away from that, it's something completely new and different, then you will feel it'll really help in a sense. It will make a huge difference, right? So that's one of the main things that really helped me is to go on a trip, you know. Uh, you really get out of my current routine, basically. Another thing that really helped me out recently was hanging out with friends, uh, quality time spent with friends. And you know, recently was my birthday and we went out and we ate sushi. We, I hung out with some of my friends and some friends that I, I don't really have the time to see or they don't have time to see me as much because you know, as you get in your mid to late twenties, you realize that you're Circle of friends will shrink in a sense because you don't have as much time, you have a business to run, maybe you have a girlfriend or whatever, full-time jobs or whatever. So it was great to see them again 
and sort of this uh, feeling of um, brotherhood and togetherness that you feel uh, that maybe you don't feel, you know, if you're burned out, you're maybe you spend more time alone, you're depressed. And the opposite of that would be connection, hanging out with other people so you can feel this sort of connection, this wholesome feeling of being with people. But also another thing that helped me a lot uh, to recover from my burnout was also rethinking about my life, rethinking about my business, you know, shifting my mind to what is most important, right? I think what can lead to burnout is you don't have the right priorities in place. So for example, if you work at a job, you work super hard, uh, but then you neglect your health, you neglect your relationships and all that, then because you didn't prioritize what's more important, essential, like, you know, your health is probably one of the most essential things in your life. You don't prioritize that and your relationships, then of course, the imbalance will cause more stress, therefore possibly burnout. So really be thinking about how I want to approach my business now. And before I remember uh, the, the year or two that led to my burnout, I was really thinking, okay, how do I get views? How do I get more money? How do I get more consultations? How do I get more clients? And that really sort of, I think that led me to the wrong places. And I think also I wasn't really efficient in the way I worked. I was trying to pump like dozens of videos instead of trying to work on, let's say, um, you know, improving my coaching or, you know, improving how I get more clients or improving, you know, certain things that would be, that would be more optimal, right? Realizing that, you know, there's one part of it that is making money, but another part of it, which is self-expression, making art and all of that. And I think these intrins intrinsic values of mine of art and purpose and inspiring others it has to come first those things are really important and i should value these even above money in some sense through that introspection like doing all of this introspection i really discovered the root cause of my burnout what caused my burnout and there were many things um but let me list them down to you so as you do your introspection you realize why you also you burnt out so those are mine so the first thing that caused my burnout is a lack of control over my work schedule i realized that you know when i had a job i couldn't choose when i worked like they would just tell me you go to work on monday tuesday wednesday whatever whether you're tired whether you're exhausted whether you're burnt out you work on that day right but yeah so that was something that was um bothering me also another thing was to the point leading to my burnout, I was doing one-on-one -on -one coaching sessions with clients and those sessions were in my schedule that was totally open. Totally open meaning from like 9 a.m. to like 9 p.m. you could book a call with me and basically my schedule was way too open in a sense that sometimes I'd be really tired but then I'd see, oh shit, I have a coaching call at 8 p.m. sort of a... <laughs> trying wanting to unwind for the evening but then i have to take the call because you know i left my schedule like that so that was entirely my fault in a sense for not setting my schedule correctly in a sense and another thing that that caused my burnout is also not having a clear work beginning and end point so for example um as i said my schedule from 9 a.m to 9 p.m just like there seemed to not really be a beginning and end point to my work. In the sense that I would start work whenever I woke up and I would end work when I would go to bed. And there was no end point really. And sometimes like while I was relaxing, sometimes I'd go back on YouTube and check comments or, you know, look my emails and whatever. And then I would go back to relaxing. It, there was no sort of clear, clear um, separation between work and my time off. And you can imagine as an entrepreneur, that's really something crucial to do to keep balance, right? And another thing that caused burnout overall is just, just the overall anxiety and the stress of being in a sort of high stress work environment. That mostly applies to my part-time job, which was to work in collections, you know, uh, dealing with clients screaming at you because they're not paying their credit cards, whatever, they can't pay, all this crap. And how did I remedy all of these things? Right, how did I remedy these? 
But I told you at the beginning of the video that I became fully self-employed. I, I decided to become a full-time YouTuber slash coach. Why do I believe that this helped me to remedy the, the causes of my burnout? Well, in a strange way, when I'm self-employed, yes, it is stressful, but I'm choosing my stress consciously, right? I feel like there's, there's incredible power in the sense of control that you get from, you know what? Yes, it's stressful, but I chose that stress. I chose to do that. I chose to uh, dive in deep and do my business, do what I want. Instead of someone telling you, okay, you show up at this time, now you have to work. It's like the stress of the job, the stress of you know dealing with uh, other people's goals and all that and you know meeting your boss's expectations and all that crap and you know fear of getting fired and those are all issues that you face at a job well when you, while you're self-employed you can't be fired you can't fire unless you can't fire yourself unless you give up basically and i'll i will never give up so this is something that i feel that because i have so much more control and agency over my destiny i feel like this counteracts the stress of you know not being sure when your next paycheck will come now which stress is better i guess only time will tell maybe at some point i realize maybe the business life is too you know too hectic or too you know all over the place and it's not stable then maybe i'll get to a job again i don't know but for now it seems like it is the right path at least Another way I remedied uh, the issues that I had that caused my burnout was to have a tighter uh, schedule, tighter calendar restrictions. So it was important for me to really set boundaries in, as to, you know, instead of taking calls from 9 a.m. to 9 p.m., now I set my schedule where you can only call me between 9 to 5. If you want to call me after 5 p.m., then you have to email me or message me. I have to set a call with you specifically after 5 p.m., and then I'll set that time for you. And that's much better because then I am prepared, right? I'm prepared, okay, you wanna talk after 5 p.m.? Okay, I have some time to sort of uh, prepare my notes and then you can get started instead of just, you know what, I, I open my calendar randomly at 6 p.m. and I'm tired out of my mind and I see a, a fucking appointment at 9 p.m. because I didn't set my calendar properly. So this is shouldn't happen again. And also setting a clear end point to my work and a clear beginning point also so now after 5 p.m or whatever at whatever time i'm done working i close everything right i log out from uh, you know social media wh whichever channels i use to reach out to prospective clients i log out of that and i'm done for the day and yeah that's really the one thing i think that helps help me the most recently also so now I've gave you sort of the overview. Let me just check the time, okay? Uh, just make sure I'm not talking for like an eternity. So what are the main lessons that I learned, you know, from that one year of, burn, of recovering from burnout? You know, one year of working on myself, you know, slowly building up uh, my work capacity so I can work longer and all that. What are the main lessons? What can you learn, you know, if maybe you are going through burnout as well? Well, first thing I learned is that burnout takes long to recover from and you can't rush the recovery. It's, you know, it's really sort of tempting, you know, especially us type A personalities uh, who really love to work, love to, you know, put in the hours and, you know, you know, really put in the hours, grind your ass off, you know, towards your goals. And we have a tendency to do that. And the danger here would be to use that same mentality to try to recover from burnout and stress. If you're thinking, oh, well, I'm burnt out, but I have to get back on the track as soon as possible. Well, I need to recover as soon as I can. Well, this is exactly the mentality of I have to do this now, that, that I'm on a rush to do this now that will lead you to burn out and will make it harder for you to recover. Which leads me to my next point is that when you feel your dip in energy or you feel some negative symptoms come back, for example, irritability, insomnia, low energy, you know, your workout starting to suffer, I have to stop. You have to stop. You can't push through 
if you start seeing some symptoms reappear, right? Yes, a bit of stress, a bit of excitement is fine, but when it be reached to a point where you are feeling worse about yourself, you're feeling worse overall, then it's time to stop. And this was really hard for me to do, especially, you know, I'm in the mi middle of a work day, I'm like reaching out to prospective clients, I'm coaching clients, and then, you know, I'm about to get on my next call, maybe it's my second or third call of the day, and I feel like, you know, I just feel woozy, I feel like I'm tired, I feel stressed out, and I just have to stop. So, I close everything, even if I've only worked 30 minutes or an hour of the day, and I stop. I stop and it hurts me in a way because I feel like, well, I have more to do and I have more on my plate and if I don't do that, maybe I won't reach my targets for the month and all that. And it's, yeah, sometimes it, sometimes I have to do that. And I have to balance also my recovery with my work. That's something really important that I learned uh, along with, you know, having to stop uh, when you feel tired and all that. About... 50% work, 50% recovery seemed to be the right spot for me. And before I used to do it like 90, 10. <laughs> so I'd work 90% of the time, recover 10% or sometimes even less. Sometimes I work like 100% of the time and not recover. Now 50, 50, which is, seems quite a lot to me in my opinion. So it's like, let's say I work eight hours and I'd rest eight hours, something like that. Or, you know, I'd work, sometimes it would be even more, for example, 70, 30. So I'd work, 30% of the time and 70% of the time I'll have time off. So some days I'd work even two hours, one hour, and the remaining of the day I do nothing. But I realized that doing that was really crucial for feeling better, for my recovery, that if I try to push it more than that, then that would really backfire and my, that would slow down my recovery. So I wouldn't want to, you know, sort of drag drag out my recovery so much that I feel like fucking broken down and all that. <laughs> So I had to do something like that, for example. Also, setting mandatory breaks. Taking breaks, taking days off, you know, no matter what, once a week, for example, I have to stop, or at the end of each workday, I have to stop at 5 p.m., whatever it is. So setting mandatory breaks where I can't work, I can't do anything, and this is super important. Um, you know, if you never give yourself a break, then you're gonna burn out. And I need to apply this rule uh, even on good days, even if I feel great. And uh, sometimes one of the best things to do is to leave work on a high note, right? Because if you leave work on a bad note with like a bad client, you're like, fuck, that was a shitty day, and then you close everything, you call it a day, and then you're like, you're left with that resentful feeling, maybe sometimes. Uh, but if you leave on a high note, you leave when you still have energy, you still feel great. But, you know, you as long as I reach my targets, or at least try to, and I put in all the effort that, that, uh, that I needed, then it's okay for me to stop. It's okay for me to take a break, like, you know what, I did enough for the day, I did enough for the week, and then take the entire, the remaining of the day off, and then just recuperate, right? Because, as I've said again, you cannot rush recovery. You cannot, and if you think that, you know what, okay, it's been a few months now, I can go back full swing, 12 hours a day or plus, then I don't think that's sustainable. So that's something to keep in mind. And one important concept I think I talked about in my previous video about my recovery is that you gotta stop when you were, you're at about, you know, 60, 70% tired. You don't want to stop when you're at 100% like <laughs> spent. While, you know, maybe that works for some people. Maybe some people, they can do that well. Like they go to 100% and then they recover. If you struggle with stress, burnout, that's probably not a good idea. You want to stop earlier. So there's this concept in, in working out that is keeping one rep in the tank. So some people, they think that you know, you gotta push to failure every single set and you have to go all the way until you can't even lift the bar anymore. Which I think is good if you're a beginner and if you're starting out because you don't know what your limit is. But once you become more intermediate um, and intermediate plus, then you have to look at more long a long-term approach where, okay, you know what? I, I know I can do, let's say, uh, 215 for five, okay? And next time I'll try to do 215 for, if I do 215 for seven, 
on the seven, I'm really gonna be struggling. But if I do just six, I'll be fine. And the workout after, then maybe I can try seven. And if you do that, you see that the progression will be more linear, will be more, yes, more gradual, slower, but at the same time, you won't hit the wall. Because if you need to hit the wall every time, and you do seven reps, and then you're like, fuck, and then the, the, the next time you work out, you have to push at eight, but last week you barely made it at seven, then you have to push at eight, like, fuck, can I make it? And it's sort of this stress that you can feel that you're not sure if you're gonna meet your, your goal, whatever. This is something that can tie you down. You know, and uh, Vernon not, is not only physical, like at the gym, but it's definitely more mental, like in your mind. So those are the main lessons really that helped me the most in my recovery. So yeah guys, that's pretty much uh, it, I would say. I still feel tired from time to time and I still feel like my energy isn't you know, stable. I still feel the, feel the ups and downs. And I feel like, you know, my emotions are still, you know, they're not you know, on an even keel all the time. I, so I still get irritable. I still feel the energy that is low. Uh, my sleep isn't always 100%, but I would say that it is still getting better, right? Month by month, the recovery is slow. And you know, some people, it takes them like, you know, three years <laughs> to like fully be back on track. I don't know how long it'll take me. So far, I think I'm I'm on a great path towards recovery. I can start working again. I think it's just a matter of not pushing myself to the brink, but pushing myself just enough until I feel great. Uh, until I feel like, you know, I can do it. And those small wins that I accumulate, I think, will really lead to feeling better in the next months to next years to come. My battery is going to die now, but if you, uh, you know, let me know in the comments what you think, what kind of videos you'd like to see. And if you struggle with feeling lost, maybe you're tired, you're burnt out also, like I was. Also, you feel confused as to what to do about your life. Then you can book a free consultation call with me. Link will be in the description. So thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next video. Peace.